Okay, let's talk about this error that 99% of math students make. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of common errors that uh, math students make, and this is typically, let's say, at the algebra level and beyond. But uh, here's the thing. Uh, almost all math students uh, will make an error. No one's perfect, okay, when you're learning math. But it's going to be those students that quickly learn, oh, that's a mistake, don't do that, learn from the errors that are going to improve because learning math is about learning from your mistakes, okay? So if you're making the same mistake over and over and over again, that's how you end up struggling in math. That's why it's so important to get feedback from your teacher and the only way they can give you feedback is by you showing all your work. So if you're doing math right now, kind of in a sloppy way where you're not showing your work, and you're, you know, you can't even understand what you wrote, then your student's never going to, or your teacher, excuse me, is never going to give you, are going to be able to really decipher what you're doing, okay? Because uh, a good teacher is going to be, hey, listen, show me at, uh, what your work step by step so I can, you know, analyze what you know and don't know. Because if you can pinpoint a mistake that you're making and correct that, then everything gets better. So in this particular video, I am going to highlight a um, very, very, very common mistake that almost everybody makes. Some people continue to make it. Other students learn from their mistakes. But I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online uh, math help programs there is. Now, you can use my math help program to take either a full online math class, or uh, you can use it to help you in a current course that you might be taking. Uh, the one thing that's exceptional, I think, about my math help program is I actually solve thousands of problems. So nothing more is more frustrating to students than to be given problems to do and then just some basic answer key and, and not really knowing how that problem was solved. In my program, I have videos and I solve thousands of uh, problems. So very, very, very uh, comprehensive and robust, but I'll let you be the judge of that. I'll leave a, uh, a link to that, uh, my program, in the description of this video. Also, um, as a math teacher, I can't help to stress the importance of taking notes. If you want to help uh, yourself improve immediately uh, uh, in mathematics, take a look at your notes. Okay, If your notes are anything less than stellar, you need to work harder. Uh, and more diligently at note-taking, okay? Just as a solid rule in math, those students who have the best notes typically have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students have no notes, sloppy notes, disorganized notes. Their grades reflect that as well. But um, in the meantime, if your notes are not where they need to be, I actually offer notes. So I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video. Those would include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. Okay, so let's get into this error, all right? And I got, uh, I'm going to show you this um, error in kind of three different flavors, okay? And uh, and if you're not, if, you know, by me explaining this, if you're saying to your, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I wouldn't uh, make that error, then that's, that's good, okay? But the chances are, even if you're seeing how I do it, you might be like, yeah, I, I would do it like how you would do it, but just... Trust me, after decades of <laughs> making math, when you're cranking out a lot of problems, you know, on a test or whatnot, students will make this error. Okay, so really, really got to focus on it. Okay, so the first uh, way we'll see this error is when we evaluate a uh, particular value into some sort of algebraic expression. Really, what I'm going to be talking about here is plugging in either a value or something else into an equation, okay? Well, I'm talking about evaluating or substituting, okay? This is what really this error is about, but it can kind of come in different uh, forms here, all right? So let's take this particular problem. If I said evaluate this expression for x equals negative 2, a lot of students would do this. They would be like, okay, he, uh, the teacher, wants me to plug in negative 2 everywhere I see x. So some students would go, 3, that's 3x squared, so that's 3 times negative 2 squared minus negative uh, 2 plus 1, okay? Now, right here, some students will be like, oh, this has a negative sign right here, so this is a negative 2, so it already has that negative sign for me, so I'll just write negative 2. Now, if you see that this is definitely wrong, what I just did here, okay, 
that's great, right? That's excellent. But you'd be surprised how many students would be like, no, this is negative. This has a negative, so I just can write a two this way and a plus one. So this evaluating, um, especially especially when there's negative values or negative expressions in, the subst in something else, really gets students in trouble, okay? This is like very, 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 very common. Now, until I go with my little trusty red pen and I and I go to your paper and I go wrong, 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 and I take off negative 10 points and then you do this and then you cry and I'm like, no, 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 listen, it doesn't have to be that bad. Learn from this so the next time you do this, you will get all the points in this problem. It's not that hard, okay? Because oftentimes students know the math. It's the setup part that they mess up, okay? So how do we want to avoid this? Well, this is the key to this video. When you're evaluating or plugging in or substituting things into another expression or formula, use grouping symbols. Use grouping symbols. What are grouping symbols? These would be parentheses or brackets like this or like this, okay? Um, and oftentimes, students do not use these grouping symbols. If they, In other words, they'll, they'll see them in certain expressions. And sometimes math teachers or math books will give you these nice, lovely grouping symbols, everything grouped out for you precisely because it's kind of obvious where they're at. But oftentimes in math, these grouping symbols are not there. You need to plug them. You need to use them, okay? When you're substituting a value into an expression, always use parentheses. Just get in the habit of doing that. So for example, anywhere I'm going to plug in this negative 2 for x, I'm going to use parentheses. So it would look like this. 3, I'm going to use parentheses here to plug in my negative 2 squared. Minus here, this is this x. I'm going to use parentheses to plug in what I'm my value, okay? Just like this, okay? So here now, this is very clear. The setup is correct. Now, whether a student makes a mistake from this point forward, that's a whole other different situation, okay? But the fact is, a lot of students do not use parentheses. When you're plugging in values, like evaluating a function or evaluating an expression, use parentheses. It will help avoid making these errors. Okay, just trust me, believe me. I've been doing this for a long, 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 long time. This is beneficial to you. Now, let's just finish this problem out. Here we have the order of operations. Negative 2 squared is what? Here, well, let's just do it this way. If I have negative 2 squared, versus negative two squared. Think about how I would write these two things. Negative two squared means negative two times negative two. That's a positive four, right? Okay, this is different. This is like a negative, a negative of a two squared. It's like negative one times two squared. So when I'm doing like the order of operations, I'm doing two squared, that's four times negative one. That's negative four. So clearly, if I didn't use parentheses here, I'm going to get the wrong answer. That's a big no-no. But here, then I'm going to have 3. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. A negative of a negative 2. Okay, so opposite of negative 2, that's plus 2 plus 1. So that's going to be what? 12 plus 2 plus 1 is 3. That would be 15. Okay? So something as simple as this, students will make this error. Just trust me, believe me when I tell you, and I can almost assure you that you have also made this error. Even top math students, if they um, you know, are doing a lot of work, okay, will uh, typically make a mistake, even though I know they know better, it oftentimes will be because I forgot to use parentheses because they're trying to rush things or, or whatnot, okay? Now, let's see this in another form, okay? Now, here is a systems problem. So uh, if you're not familiar with solving systems, I have two equations here, uh, both involve x and y. But if I wanted to solve this system, I'm like, okay, y equals x plus 1. I could substitute this y, okay, for this, right? So if y equals x plus 1, I could substitute this y for that x plus 1, because y is equal to x plus 1, and I can solve this equation, okay? So let's see what a lot of students do to uh, mess this up. They'll go, okay, that's going to be 2x plus, here, let me write that a little better, plus 5 times um, this y, but y is equal to x plus 1. So 5 times x plus 1 is equal to 12, right? So 
they're substituting this y for this, and I'll write that. Okay? Again, not using parentheses. I'm evaluating or plugging in or substituting, okay? Um, something for something else, and this is totally wrong. So, uh, the, again, let's just kind of uh, see how this error kind of develops. This is going to be 2x plus 5 times x is 5x plus 1 equals 12. And as soon as it continues, and then again, we have this situation, and it's not good, right? So uh, what went wrong here? Well, uh, this is not so obvious, all right, in algebra. Let me get rid of this here for a second. Okay, so anytime we have a sum or difference, a sum or difference, okay, like so, two things being added up, like 2 plus 3, Okay, that is one value. That's a group. Okay, put group with symbols. Sometimes, oftentimes, in uh, like a system prompt, there will not be grouping symbols, but you should put them in, like so. Okay, use those parentheses. So now, if I'm substituting uh, for y, I know y is equal to x plus 1, so I can substitute this y for x plus 1. When I do that, and I'm using parentheses. Looks, let's take a look what happens here now, okay? So here, you now know to use a distributive property, assuming you know how to use a distributive property. So now it's going to be 2x plus 5 times x plus 5 times 1, okay, which is 5 equals 12. And then when you solve this, then you're on the right track of getting this problem right, okay? But this little error that I just showed you, okay, previously, I'm telling you from experience, this happens all the time. Even to the best math students, they'll make this mistake. And then as soon as I, you know, take some points off and be like, hey, point out. And, and I appreciate those students who write out that step. So I can clearly see, oh, you made your mistake right there. Don't do that. And those students who are paying attention will not do that again. And then, hey, they move on. Listen, you make a mistake on one or two proms, it doesn't make a difference. Even if it's on a test, it's not going to be the end of the world. It's not going to dent your grade. It's nothing that you can't recover from. So as a math teacher, I know. you know, I'm like, hey, listen, even if I take off five points, whatever the case is, and it was a 10-point uh, prom, I know it's not going to be the end of the world for you in terms of your grade. But it needs to be significant enough for you to be like, Look, don't do this. What happened here? All right, I'll write a little note. Don't do that. Make sure da 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 da. And of course, if I can see this as a trend, then I can, you know, I'll pull you off to the side. And be like, hey, this is the mistake you're making. If you correct this, you know, you're going to really, you know, improve. So that's what you need to be doing. You got to be looking at, you know, your math work and identifying common mistakes. Right. And what I'm sharing with you. Uh, in this video and other videos that I've done on my channel are very, very common mistakes that even best of uh, uh, math students make at least once, okay? All right, now, I think I have one more example. Yes, I do, down here to illustrate substituting in uh, values for variables. Now, we can have an, a variable expression for another variable expression as we just did in our previous problem, but here, this is uh, the quadratic uh, formula. Again, another place where students mess up because they mess up plugging in the values, evaluating. All right, so let's suppose we're going to solve, and here's our A, B, and C values. If you're not familiar with the quadratic formula, don't worry about it. This is a formula. We have Bs here, have A and a C. So we have to substitute in these respective numbers, right, for these variables. So we would go X equals minus B, okay? Now, this already has a negative sign in front of it, and we have this negative 3. So a lot of students, for whatever reason, they'll be like, oh, that's negative 3, because this is negative 3. This wants me to have a negative 3 here, so they think that that's good enough. I could just write that as negative 3. Again, no parentheses. Wrong answer, okay? This is a mistake. So you got to use these parentheses like so, okay? Now, this really gets... Uh, uh, very um, confusing in this part of the uh, quadratic form, we call the discriminant. So b squared is negative 3. So let's just do this without parentheses. It would be like negative 3 squared minus 4. a is negative 1 times negative 1 times c is negative 2. Okay? So you would be looking at this situation, and this is just like, wow, 
you know, ripe with errors. So again, okay, the way we'd want to do this is to be very, very specific about what we're plugging in. So b squared is going to be negative 3 squared minus, okay, this is a subtraction sign, 4, our a is going to be negative 1, and our c will be negative 2, okay, all over 2 times a, which is, uh, uh, our a is negative 1, so that would be 2 times negative 1. Okay, and when you do this, when you plug in your values, you're going to double, triple check. Okay, do I got everything plugged in correctly? Negative 1, negative 3, negative 2. You're checking the formula. You're checking everything else. And then from this point forward, you're just working this one step at a time, being super cautious not to make any errors with all these uh, negative signs. And, of course, this is this negative 4 right here. This really messes up a lot of students. When I teach a quadratic formula, I like to emphasize this minus 4 part. It's, it's sometimes easier if you think of this as plus negative 4. So you can see a negative uh, times a negative times a negative. This is going to be negative times a negative is positive times a negative. So this whole value will be negative. Again, it's conceptually, it's not uh, difficult to understand. But the mechanics of working these problems out, students make a lot of mistakes. And uh, it can be dramatically um, avoided, these type of errors, by using grouping symbols, parentheses, okay? Just use them. Use them all the time. You can't go wrong with parentheses. They're not going to hurt you, okay? Use them in some differences. Uh, the most common would be like so, but these brackets are uh, grouping symbols, and these little squiggly guys are also grouping symbols. So don't stay away from these guys, okay? Just use these type of parentheses. But if you um, obviously need more parentheses within an expression, then we would use the brackets, uh, these two types of brackets. Okay, so um, believe me when I tell you, I wouldn't make a video like this with this type of title if I haven't seen uh, this mistake happen through the decades of teaching mathematics. Okay, and if you can learn in advance of not to make mistakes that others have, all right, then you're going to avoid some pain for sure. Okay. All right, so if this video uh, helped you out in some way, if you enjoyed it, I would certainly enjoy if you smashed that like button. Um, also, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully um, you'll consider uh, subscribing. Um, if you like my teaching style, I already have hundreds of videos on my channel organized in various playlists that are there to help you out. But if you really want my best work, just follow the, uh, the links in the description of this video, and uh, that's where you'll find my best stuff. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.